gold price hitting another record high this morning. So it's a wonderful morning to be joined on the phone by the Oracle of Delphi, uh, Jeff Rhodes himself, CEO of International Commodities. Morning, Jeff. Yeah, good, good morning, Malcolm. Well, welcome to the wacky race. It's called gold. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I'm looking at my screen. Um, it's dropped down just below $1,900 an ounce now, gold to 18.99. But uh, it has been up to a new record high this morning, Jeff. Absolutely. The high I've seen is 1910 so far, and uh, yeah, it, it is gold is officially out of control, and uh, the dollar's not really doing much, Malcolm. The, the you know euro one one forty three seventy equities last night steady, no no you know slightly higher, but nevertheless gold is just every day another record, and and actually we've seen a fresh record posted in each of the last four trading sessions, and and Malcolm last week. Gold was a, a distant 1765, almost eight percent lower than the current price. So, so a rally of eight percent in in just seven days. It's it's incredible by any standard. Yeah, it's gone up 25 percent, hasn't it, since July? I mean, it's only last month. Absolutely. And and if we go back this time last year, let me ask you a question, Malcolm. Where was gold this time last year? Um, I think it was um, a, a, around 1300. Not bad, actually. 1225. Mm -hmm. So 675. This time last year, as we were speaking, the gold price was $675 lower or 55%. And, and, and there isn't an asset class in the world that's recorded that kind of growth, except, of course, silver, which we can talk about a bit later. Just, I mean, if you have one kilo of gold, I mean, just think of the capital growth you'd get on that. In, Absolutely. Yeah. And many people, of course, have uh, did, did, did choose to to move into gold and um, have done done very well. But uh, I, I would caution uh, everyone listening to this, and, and it really is a, a caveat mTOR market. Buyer beware, because uh, I think very much if you look at characteristics of a bubble, gold really ticks all the boxes. So uh, we are looking at um, a, a real sort of asset bubble here with gold as well. well what, what do you think might prick that bubble? Well, I, I don't know, actually, because every, every, every day we see a fresh record. But I, I just think um, uh, a change in sentiment um, in, in the equity markets, I think, would be the signal for a reversal. Once, you know, there is universal doom and gloom and, and pessimism uh, around about, you know, the world economy and, and the potential, uh, potential double dip in the U.S. and so on. But I think if we see anything like uh, an improvement in sentiment, in terms of uh, the global economy and in terms of equity markets, uh, gold is dangerously high, uh, and uh, it, it is out of completely out of whack with what I would consider to be fair value, which is actually something close close to one thousand dollars. If you look at the, the the cost of producing gold, it really is about eight hundred and fifty dollars, and if you had a healthy profit margin of twenty percent, that gives you a price of one thousand and twenty, and so we're nine. 80% above fair value, and, uh, and in anyone's language, that is definitely bubble territory. Jeff, with the Federal Reserve holding its annual symposium this week, do you see that ben Bernanke's announcement um, doing anything to the gold price? Do you think we'll see a correction? Uh, it could do, because, because I think uh, the market is building in and factoring in QE3, uh, and definitely we've seen the Fed you know, state publicly to hold interest rates at close to zero until 2013. Uh, and it was, in fact, that kind of comment that was behind this, this, this phenomenal rally in the gold price. So if we see any, any, any positive kind of comments coming from that symposium, I think uh, gold is vulnerable. So I think we're building, in, you know, if you like, bad news from, from that event. But if there's anything like good news, I do think that uh, it could spark a sell-off. And, and uh, technically, if I look at the charts, really the first point of any support whatsoever is 17.50, way below current prices. Um, Citigroup, though, says that gold has a one in four chance of spiking to $2,500 an ounce. Um, first, wh when do you think it's going? I know you've been talking about a bubble and perhaps a little bit of a price collapse, but when do you think it's going to reach 2000 
Well, I, look, I, I do think... Sure, it could be today. <laughs> you never know. Um, I, I do think we're going to have a reversal, but that reversal will probably still be... It'll be a buying opportunity, Malcolm. I just don't think this is the time to come in. So a reversal, uh, and Lord, we spoke about this before, this remains a buy-the-dips market. It's just that the dip is a long way off. So I think anything between 1750 now and 1650, a retracement back into that area, certainly 1650, would be a good opportunity to buy because a price north of 2000 in, in 2012 looks quite likely, and many people are calling for much higher. Um, if we look at the inflation-adjusted previous all-time high of 850 back in January 1980, that, that gives a price of around about $2,400. So, so to, ma to match the previous inflation-adjusted price, we would need to go up to that level. Uh, and I, I would think in 2012, definitely a possibility, but I think a probability is, is a reversal at some point that will be nasty and, and will damage a lot of people who have come in on the buy side and actually don't really know why they're buying. Jeff, I want to look at exchange-traded products and, and mostly exchange-traded funds because they're pretty much the hottest investment at the moment. Are you seeing that they've, they, they've reached a record? Um, what are you seeing in the UAE? Do you see that a lot of gold investments are going into ETFs? Uh, well, I, I don't really, I mean, I can't really identify particularly that uh, a lot of money has flowed into ETFs from the UAE in, in itself. But as you say, there is a, a huge amount of money flooding into uh, exchange-traded funds, certainly in gold and silver. Uh, and uh, I would note, there's no doubt that some investors in this part of the world are, are part of that club. Um, I'm seeing two conflicting headlines. I saw a, a story yesterday that Indian gold sales seem to have calmed down. And the, uh, one of the headlines of the stories in the Times newspaper this morning, Indians ignore the soaring price in their insatiable appetite for gold. Um, what are you seeing out of India? Yeah, we're still seeing good demand, actually, Mark. I must say, there, there, there doesn't really seem to be any slowdown in, in, in buying. Typically, uh, this is a very good season for physical gold in India. It's, uh, you know, it's a run-up to festival time and the wedding season. The monsoons are over. So we are seeing decent demand, despite the record levels. Uh, but, but I would say... Uh, in our experience, it is a, a touch slower than usual, but still quite healthy. Silver's out of the 30s uh, at last. It's 43 and a half uh, dollars for one ounce as well. Um, it's, you know, I mean, although the percentage movement might be quite good, it's a bit difficult to get excited about movements of four or five cents, Jeff. Absolutely disagree, Malcolm. So your second question this morning, one year ago, where was the silver price, Malcolm? Well, I think, if I remember rightly, uh, it was at a dip of about $17 an ounce, wasn't it? You are very good. You, you have a career ahead of you in the bullion market. It was $18, and, and today it's 43 and a half. And that is, that, that's an increase of 142% in 12 months. So I think that's quite exciting and actually validates uh, my, my long-stated uh, comments that silver is my favorite metal. And in fact, if you'd like gold a year ago and put some of your money in, into silver, you would have made almost three times as much. It's interesting, isn't it? So when, if, if and when this, uh, this price, price does collapse of gold, is silver going to go down with it or not? Or is it independent no. now? Not necessarily. Um, I think there's. Uh, I, I think there's a strong argument that that a reversal in the gold price could be sparked by a better outlook for the global economy. That in itself would be good for silver because, of course, silver is very industrial. At least 50% of silver demand physically each year goes into industrial production, whereas probably no more than about 10% in gold. So I think that the kind of trigger that might see gold go down might be the very trigger that actually pushes silver up. So, so I think probably I'd be looking at the relative values between, say, silver and gold as, as a play. I'd also look at platinum versus gold because that is currently a parity, and typically platinum is almost double that, uh, the value of gold, because, of course, there's not much platinum around. But, but as with silver, platinum's direction really will be determined by uh, the outlook for the global economy and certainly the auto sector. Jeff Rhodes, CEO of International Commodities. We look forward to talking to you next week when uh, we might be up at a new, new, new record high. Maybe 2,000, you never know. <laughs> Thanks very much, Jeff. Take care. Bye-bye. You're